Okay, let's move on uh, to 2018 with image reconstruction methods. And we are now talking about the paper that appeared at the Asian Conference in Computer Vision 2018. And we have talked about the fact that events measure brightness changes. So just uh, step sizes uh, and with a contrast threshold C, right? So ideally, if we integrate this um, brightness changes, we should be able to obtain absolute intensity. So from the increments, you integrate the increments and then you get the absolute uh, intensity. Well, that's what it's represented on the image here on the left. If you would do that, and you see that, so there's uh, the bike rider, right? And there is a lot of event noise and this event noise accumulates. So pixel-wise direct integration um, is not a good idea as it is. Instead, what uh, these people propose from ANU is to use a high-pass temporal filter to remove this uh, accumulated event noise. So no special filtering, just do a uh, high pass temporal filter. And well, the result is the image on the right. And as you can see, considerable amount of noise has been removed, the event noise, right? This is not filtering in space, it's filtering in time. So before this image is generated. So the problem now is that um, well, if we have a high pass filter, that it means if this x axis x axis is temporal frequency, it means that we are we allow to pass uh, um, high speed changes, but we don't allow to pass slow um, uh, slow time information, which are the low frequencies. Then it means that we are not able to reconstruct the static background, which is it's obvious, right? Um, so then they propose a strategy to fuse this kind of reconstruction or to fuse the events with the frames from the Davis to get the best of both worlds, to get the slow time information from the from regular grayscale frames and then the high temporal information from the events. Okay, but here we will not talk about the, this fusion strategy. Um, instead, so that which is called a complementary filter. Instead, we just look at this filter when the inputs are only events, they are not frames, and see the output. So this is a, a deterministic filter, it's not a probabilistic filter. And what it has, it has an internal state, and the state of the of the of this filter is an image, an image that is updated on a per pixel basis and asynchronously with every incoming event. And then this uh, state is uh, basically spread out. So this is the, the filter in action. If you input these events here represented as uh, frames, but they are really asynchronous, then this is the kind of reconstructed image. And it's dark because it's really recorded at night time. Um, you can watch the, the video for, for more details. Yeah, so let's uh, look at a couple more examples. So on the bottom left are the input events. On the top left, just for comparison, are the, the frames from a Davis camera. And on the bottom right are the uh, pixels, so the brightness or the intensity image reconstructed from the events only. Let's not look at the top right yet. So you see that there are some We'll see now. Um, so the events are able to uh, capture more or less the silhouette of the sun, but then the integration is uh, still not perfect. It's uh, because there is event noise. It's leaving this this trace of events, just as if the if there is like bleeding edges, and that happens in the sun. It's more prominent, but it also happens with with other edges, right? You see some bleeding edges. They are called in the bicycle. So again, we have the input events on the left and on the bottom right, just using temporal filtering with a high-pass filter, uh, we are able to obtain like a reconstructed image intensity, which is, uh, I think it's quite amazing that it's able to do that just doing high-pass filter on the events.
Okay, now let's move on to 2019 and 2020. So in this uh, the latest years, we see many image reconstruction methods that are coming out and then they are doing uh, reconstruction by deep learning, using deep learning, right? So this is uh, one of them, events to video. It appeared at CVPR 2019. Um, and basically it's converting events through uh, supervised training a network into um, into frames and then using these frames for different applications to show their utility. So the deep learning method it's uh, a recurrent net network with a unit is uh, the main component. And the loss function, what is being minimized is a perceptual loss uh, called LPIPS and temporal consistency because they want to generate video. So they want not a flickering effect between consecutive uh, images. This is a network that is trained on simulation, but it transfers well to real world data. It's pretty similar to the results that we saw from Barwa that they were also training in simulation, this uh, dictionary learning, and then they were transferring it to, to real data. And it shows a big improvement with respect to previous methods. And it, it further shows that they reconstructed images because they are of enough or good quality that they can be used on off-the-shelf computer vision methods designed for image data, such as object classification, visual inertial odometry, or any other uh, depth estimation. Yeah, we'll see that. Well, the idea is that the events that are like this point cloud, then they are they come asynchronously in time, but then they are uh, fed to the network in the form of a voxel grid. So we convert the events into uh, an interpolated voxel grid. And this network receives two things, the, the events and the state from, uh, from the previous reconstruction. So it's, this is a recurrent connection. And then it outputs um, the reconstructed image here on the right and the state for the next uh, reconstruction. Let's look at uh, some results. So on the left, you see the output of uh, a normal camera, uh, phone camera in this case at high speed. And on the right, you see uh, a reconstructed image that soon we will play the video. But this is just an image where we wiggled a bit the camera so that um, we were able to um, reconstruct the video even though the camera now looks static. So we wiggled before and now we will shoot this gnome with the bullet coming from the left and see if we can uh, uh, reconstruct that scene. So it was, now it's a hundred times slower, right? So we can exploit the high speed, the high temporal resolution of the event camera to acquire all this information and then do high speed uh, video reconstruction. Same with the Mac. Yeah, these are quite impressive results of the high speed. These were recorded, I think, with the Samsung DDS Generation 3. So the re resolution is uh, VGA, 640 by 480 pixels. This is another example where they show uh, how popping up a, a balloon and you can see, reconstruct the water and the, the plastic of the balloon. So this video shows that um, the events, they have high dynamic range. They are inherently high dynamic range. And this method also preserves those properties. You can do a reconstruction that is high dynamic range compared to other ones that if you use a, a standard camera that has a single exposure time for all pixels in the image, you are not able to capture very bright and very dark areas at the same time. And here is the same with the window. The window is uh, not properly exposed, whereas with the reconstruction, you can get a good job at reconstructing both indoors and outdoors the room. And this is just an example from the previous data set. 
and it can also be used for color reconstruction. This is a high dynamic range scene out inside and outside the window. Inside is dark, outside is very bright. But you're still able to do reconstruction, applying the same technique to colored events. And it works on dynamic scenes, right? Because this is a network, there is no need to estimate motion. Okay, uh, then let's see what are some of the applications that such uh, images have. One of them are vision inertial odometry. So from the events, we obtain uh, reconstructed images and then we can pass them to off the shelf uh, algorithms such as Vince Mono and then run visual inertial uh, odometry. Um, well, because the camera also has an IMU vision inertial odometry on these images and well the results are quite good competitive with the state of the art this is showing how you can run a object detector such as YOLO v3 on the reconstructed images and it works detects cards sign signals or you can also do um, use another network uh, to do monocular depth estimation so in principle, this shows that there is a lot of information in the event stream that it's possible to obtain um, these reconstructed images and then um, do more things with those. And uh, to, to finish with this review of the literature, let me just look at two uh, deep learning methods, but now using unsupervised. Uh, training techniques, right? One of them is uh, from Bardo, from Patrick Bardo Imperial College, that in his thesis, he shows that you can use um, adversarial networks. Um, basically, he's trying to replace what he had in his previous work in 2016, and this uh, complicated variational uh, optimization that was jointly estimated image reconstruction on optical flow. Well, the idea is to replace uh, that uh, handcrafted uh, regularizer with um, kind of what he calls natural image prior. So you take the events, you convert it into some internal representation, then you measure some event data loss, and then you will compare the result of the reconstruction with a database of natural images, pass them to a discriminator, and these two agents, the, the generator and the discriminator, they have to uh, play against each other. And so, well, it's a standard now in deep learning. The idea is that you want to generate, the generator wants to create reconstructed images uh, as good as possible so that they could fool the discriminator. And here are on the right some results. So on the top left, the results from a standard camera. Um, just for comparison, on the bottom left is this uh, manifold uh, regularizer from the group in Graz. On the top right is the result from joint estimation of intensity, reconstruction, and optical flow. So the 2016 work. And on the bottom right is the, the new approach, the, the one with natural image priors or with GANs, adversarial uh, networks. Yeah, and it shows some better contrast, at least, than other, other results. And that was 2019, the reference is at the bottom. And also in 2019, there was a paper by the group, I think, in South Korea, um, where they were just uh, also using events. They were stacking them to something like a voxel grid and using this idea of general conditional general adversarial networks with a generator and a discriminator to generate images, uh, reconstructed images. And here you see on the right the results. So the rightmost column is the results, and the, the middle is the, the ground truth from a Davis uh, camera. So the results are not as good as uh, supervised uh, network by, by the group in Zurich, like this one, uh, but still it's, uh, it's kind of uh, promising that it might, be, might get better. And I think that's uh, a review of some of the methods in the state of the art for image reconstruction.